Hi, this is Brian Forcer, and today we're going to be doing a very extensive tour of Petra in Jordan. Now, you may be acquainted with Petra from one of the Indiana Jones films, but what you're going to see today is that Petra is far more complicated and far larger than you possibly imagined. Most people think of the um, what's called the treasury, and they think that that is Petra, as well as what's called the Sikh, which is the entranceway to Petra. But in fact, the Sikh is approximately, which is what we're approaching now, one mile long, which is about 1.7 kilometers. And the entire Petra complex is seven miles or 12 kilometers long. So we're now entering the beginning part of the Sikh. You can also take a horse and carriage if you want. We decided to walk. And already we're seeing tool marks in the stone. This is a sandstone, but according to our geologist, it's quite a hard sandstone, almost like a quartzite, which means that working it would require relatively advanced tools. Now here we see one of the water troughs. There's one on the left-hand side and one on the right-hand side. And you can see here that obviously it was hewn out of solid rock, but it was later repaired. So the standard story is that Petra was created by a group of people called the Nabataeans somewhere around 2,000 years ago, but it's actually more likely that the Nabataeans discovered Petra as an abandoned, ruined complex, and then they rebuilt it. What we're also going to see is darkening of the western wall surfaces, which you can see already. And again, our geologist suggested, after my observation, that this could be heat damage, the result of possibly of um, ejection of plasma from the sun that struck different parts of the earth. We see evidence of this also in Egypt, and we also see this in places like Peru. There is some of the darkened surfaces, again, on the western sides of structures. So once again, there's Cody on the right. We see the water trough. And then you see where it has been damaged and then repaired. And actually here, where it's actually blown out, was repaired and blown out again. So it's probably Nabataean work in terms of the repairs. But it's our suggestion that um, Petra could very well be much, much older than most people think. And the possibility is that it is 12,000 plus years old and was damaged during the cataclysmic events of the Younger Dryas period. So looking up from inside the Sikh, see how tall the walls of stone are. Now we're starting to see more parallel tool marks. Are they hand tools? Well, as we progress further along, we're going to see much more complicated what I believe are machining marks. Now these little depressions in the stone are actually the local gods. So the site had localized gods prior to the time of the major Abrahamic religions. There is another view up. As we wander farther down into the Sikh, on the left hand side, what's left of a carving of a human, and then now we're seeing more vertical tool marks. Again, they don't look that sophisticated, but as we proceed, we're going to see much, much more sophisticated work. And here again on the right side, you see the darkened surfaces. Uh, again, this material is red sandstone, so it could be that the heat actually vitrified 
the quartz content, or the silica content of the stone, turning it into glass. And there on the left-hand side was more of the damage. And here above Robert's head, you can see more of the darkening. We also see this at a, a site called Little Petra, which is located close by. The wall in the background is actually a dam created by the Nabataean people to collect water, because that was one of their major resources and also exports for, uh, to the around, surrounding area. So again, more of the darkening on the, in general, the, the uh, western surfaces. And finally, we're getting to the famous treasury. Now again, most people think that this is what Petra is, and in fact, it's only a small percent of the major Petra site. And as the seek opens up, we're going to get a full view of the treasury. And we see definite evidence that the treasury is relatively new, as in 2,000 years old. Look at the vertical wall, and again, you see the very much darkening of the surfaces. And this is more of a, a slow pan of that. So you see the blackened surfaces there, gray surfaces. And then the treasury itself is relatively homogeneous in terms of color. Of course, it has been repaired in recent times, but I think uh, this is an indication that. Um, at least the darkening of the surfaces, that Petra is much, much older than we've been taught. Now you see all the stylized work that's been done at the treasury, but as we wander further through Petra, we're going to see many, many um, edifices or vertical surfaces, which are actually quite simple compared to the treasury. And that's because I believe that the Nabataean people around 2000 years ago hired Greek sculptors to come to Petra and do the finishing work. There again, more of the darkened surfaces. And now you can see that Petra is really substantial in terms of size, much, much bigger than most people realize. Here again is more obvious darkening of the surfaces. Again, I believe that's vitrification from high heat, possible plasma discharge from the sun, as uh, <clears throat> stated by people such as Do uh, Dr. Robert Schock. And you see all of these edifices as we walk through the 12 kilometers of Petra. And some of these edifices actually have openings and very large chambers inside, which we're going to be able to have a look at. And look at the extreme erosion of the surfaces. It, again, I believe that the treasury was repaired during uh, Nabataean times and then more recently. Now we're actually going to go inside one of these relatively large chambers. You see all the beautiful colors of the different minerals in the red sandstone. And then as we step outside, chamber after chamber after chamber after chamber. There's a large amphitheater that could have been built during Greek times. And again, we're seeing more possible vitrification of the surface of the stone. And as we look up, more of these open chambers, and there on the right-hand side actually are the modern bathrooms created in one of the large chambers. And this is just a scan of the, the last area we're going to visit at the end of this video. Of course, lots of merchants. There are the bathrooms once again. And again, look at all of the vertical surfaces that have been cut into the bedrock. It's, it's an absolutely astounding sight.
So now we're going to walk towards the end. Uh, this was our second trip to Petra. On the first trip, Irene and I went to the very end. We did walk 12 kilometers, more or less, to the end. At this point, we're walking through the Roman uh, period of history. With the columns made of several different sections of stone, uh, relatively small stones being used. Of course, lots of camels there offering rides. Now we're going through, again, part of the Roman section. This has been reconstructed in modern times. And here again, a rather large Roman construction. Then look at the back wall and again, all of the chambers. And here's a scan of the chambers relatively close to the end of Petra, but there is a, a series of staircases that go, I think it's 2,000 or 3,000 steps up to another large edifice called, I believe it's called the Monastery, but whether it was a monastery, who knows. And so this is the final area that we're going to be exploring on this particular visit. Relatively modern uh, repair work done to the steps there. And here again, this is Roman construction, uh, as well as ancient chambers from the pre-Roman and probably pre-Nabataean uh, time period. Up a modern staircase, or recently repaired. And then look at these columns. Notice that the two first ones are multi-sections, and the three others there are single pieces of stone, possibly carved out of the bedrock itself. And now we're going inside a massive chamber, of which there are, I believe, about five at Petra of this size. Now, a rough calculation is that this chamber is 300,000 cubic feet in size. So 300,000 cubic feet of material had to be removed. And then look at the rows of tool marks. On the surface, you can see that they're lined up perfectly, row upon row. And then on the walls, we see rows of tool marks at a 45 degree angle. So these parallel tool marks are almost perfect. I think this was done by machines, not by hand. Just think of the scale, 300,000 cubic feet of material removed. And then the ceiling ones, once again, beautifully parallel tool marks. Hard to determine how many tools were used at one time. And how did they get up that high to do it? They could have made scaffolding, uh, scaffolding possibly, but. And there we have the transition from the ceiling to the wall with the 45 degree angle tool marks. So these are some upcoming events at Hidden Inca Tours for you to join. In March, our annual tour of ancient Egypt, focusing on metaphysics and lost ancient high technology. Right after that, we'll be in Israel doing the same thing, lost ancient high technology and metaphysics, as well as the sacred sites of the Bible. In early June, late May 2020, contact in the desert at Indian Wells, California. June of 2020, our annual Inti Raimi Inca Celebration of the Sun Tour, including megalithic and Inca sites. August, uh, another tour of Peru and Bolivia, focusing on the elongated skulls, but also Inca and uh, megalithic sites. And then our grand tour in November, explore the mysteries of Peru and Bolivia. Thank you for watching.